everybody we're starting today's video with a little intro because this this video and the videos to come are going to be pretty special uh we're starting october it's lit guys it's lit uh october is halloween so halloween starts today and so i'm doing a thing where i am i'm gonna do um creepy whatever whatever punch and skittles told me was like creepy poster draw halloween um and I'm also probably gonna be watching a crap ton of scary movies and like live streams, so like, say hi. Hi. Yeah, this is my little cousin, jo no, she's my aunt, I'm sorry. I call her my cousin because she's younger than me, but she's actually my aunt, don't ask. Um, so basically we're just gonna be watching a bunch of scary movies, you know, living I up this October movies. month. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. We watched It maybe two weeks ago. Oh yeah, dude, that was so good. Um, it was amazing. I should do something with that. With ooh. So basically what's gonna happen is there's gonna be Halloween movie live streams, there's gonna be uh, Draw Halloween. Uh, I wanna do at least... Um, every other day just to really get into the spirit of October because it's not going to be an everyday thing uh there's a lot of events that I got to go to but and I also want to bring you guys some content like scary movies so I hope you guys enjoy the rest of this video and some fun creepy pastas that I found on a Wattpad story that I'm gonna draw for and I hope you guys enjoy so enjoy. yeah 3 a.m. My cousin recently moved here from India. On a recent road trip exploring America, we were shooting crap and exchanging ghost stories and laughing at the similarities and differences between American ghost stories and Indian ghost stories when I asked her, had she ever experienced anything supernatural? Her eyes widened as she averted her eyes to the window. Just when the silence was getting too much for me, she softly responded, yes, a few. One was troubling. When I was a second year in college, I had stayed with an all-girl hostel. I made many friends. We were all very happy to be in school, away from our conservative parents. The hostel was so much fun, but it was a very old building. Electricity was only put in the rooms. Sometimes, candles were placed along the windows if a watchman was present, but normally once you left the room you were faced with complete darkness. It's common to wake up someone if you needed to walk down the restroom at the end of the hall. We all had a childish fear of being alone in the dark. One night, I had to use the restroom. It was about 3 a.m. I went to my friend's bed and tapped her arm. She immediately opened her eyes as soon as I touched her. I apologized for bothering and told her I needed to pee. She smiled and hopped out of bed. All the way down the hallway, she laughed and danced. I could not see her, but her bangs clacked together loudly and the bells on her anklets jingled softly. It was very calming. I laughed and sashayed my hips down the hallway with her too tired to match elaborate arm movements. She said nothing to me, though occasionally she would hum her favorite Bollywood songs. The same thing happened at our return. I fell asleep easily. I awoke fairly late the next morning to the sound of men in our room. They surrounded her bed. I bolted from my bed, prepared to protect my friend when I realized they were administrators of the college. I peered over closer. My friend's lifeless eyes were fixated on my bed, the same smile on her face. Suicide. Her time was 11.30 p.m., almost four hours before I woke her. the cabin. There was a hunter in the woods who, after a long day of hunting, was in the middle of an immense forest. It was getting dark, and having lost his bearings, he decided to head in one direction until he was clear of the increasingly oppressive foliage. After what seemed like hours, he came across a cabin in a small clearing. Realizing how dark it had grown, he decided to see if he could stay here for the night. He approached the door and found it ajar. Nobody was inside. The hunter flopped down on the single bed, deciding to explain himself to the owner in the morning. As he looked around the inside of the cabin, he was surprised to see the walls adorned by several portraits, all painted in incredible detail. Without exception, they appeared to be staring down at him, their features twisted into looks of hatred and malice. Staring back, he grew increasingly uncomfortable. Making a concerted effort to ignore the many hateful faces, he turned to face the wall and exhausted, he fell into a restless sleep. The next morning, the hunter awoke. He turned, blinking in unexpected sunlight. Looking up, he discovered the cabin had no portraits, only windows. 